Hey guys, it's Haley and welcome to another bookish video. Today I'm going to be getting into my February wrap up. I ironically read more books in February than any month in the past six months even though it's the shortest month i don't know how that happened i think i've finally broken out of my slump that i've been in since literally august and it feels so good i loved so many books and i cannot wait to talk to you about them but before we get into the wrap up let's talk about the sponsor of today's video which is timu if you're not familiar with timu they are an online marketplace kind of similar to amazon basically they just have anything and everything under the sun with savings up to 90% off and free shipping. They also offer free returns up to 90 days. So it is an amazing, affordable and accessible option if you're looking to buy school supplies, if you're a teacher, home furnishings and like decor type of stuff or clothes, beauty, pet stuff. I mean, they have the full gamut of everything you could possibly imagine. You can shop on the Timu app, which makes it really easy. And if you use my code you can access all of these amazing coupons and perks from my bundle and you can also shop all of the items that I got in today's haul which I'm about to show you guys so here are a few of the things that I got from Timu starting out with these adorable earrings I literally love them so much they're so cute and actually most of the stuff that I'm wearing I got from Timu this little white under tea kind of like layering piece is amazing quality. It's just like the ones that are going viral on the TikTok shop right now actually. And it actually came with a black one as well in the same pack. Also this like little oversized cropped vest moment. I also picked up quite a few things for our trip that we're taking this spring break. I got this adorable little like makeup caddy kind of carrier thing with these daisies. And then I got a matching like shower caddy so I can put my makeup in here my shower stuff in here and just have all my packing look really cute and when we were thinking about going to the beach I knew that I wanted this hat I saw it at like a luxury store and it had all these puka shells on it but it was like $78 I think so I just decided I'm, I'm wondering if I could get this from Timu and y'all I did um look at this Look at this. Is this not giving like country beach girl, like rich lady from a thriller? Don't look at it with this outfit, but you know what I mean? Like my friend told me I look like a brand muffin, but I don't care. This is exactly what I was wanting. And literally I DIY'd it for under $5 from Timu. I got the hat and then I got a pack of puka shells and I just glued them on. I also got these sunglasses for the beach, which are so chic, so cute. And I got this amazing, shell necklace to wear on the beach these like pearlescent shell earrings I think they're gonna look so cute like at a beachy dinner the accessories on Timu are literally amazing got this massive pack of so many gold rings that I can just mix and match and then I also got these I don't know if you can see but they're little initial rings and I got a C an A and an M so I stacked them to say cam for when I don't want to wear and possibly ruin my really expensive diamond ring on the beach or going to the gym I've been wearing these stacks that just say cam and I think it's so cute I've also worn these to the gym and the pool for the past two weeks and they haven't tarnished at all Obviously, I had to get a little bikini, so I got this adorable little like scrunchy fabric, and then it has the matching like kind of higher rise bottom. And to go over that, I got this cover up, just like mesh tan dress. And then lastly, I just got a bunch of tops that I can wear with jeans and just like mix and match. First up, we have this pink long sleeve basic. It's kind of like the same material as this just like a really good layering piece also got this adorable very like coquette with the bow and the lace little tube top with some ruching on the side another like coquette inspired top this little tube top with the ribbons going down the side i love this one is super beachy just like this pink kind of like split mesh tube top and then i got a couple black just like 
neutral going out tops. This one is just like a plain black lace cami I can wear with low rise jeans. And this one is like just a plain black halter that ties around the neck. So it is safe to say I am totally set for my beach trip thanks to Timu. If you guys are interested in checking out any of this stuff, again, you can use my code and click my link down below to access that coupon bundle in the Timu app. Thank you so, so much to Timu for sponsoring this video. And now let's go ahead and get into the wrap up. First, as always, I'll go over my stats. I read a total of 20 books in February. I truly don't know how I did this. I haven't read 20 books in a month in so long. And that was a total of 6,272 pages. My mood breakdown was pretty standard, dark, mysterious, tense, and emotional reads, but a couple more funny reads than usual, which is interesting. About a third of the books that I read were fast paced and the other two thirds were medium paced. I read eight books under 300 pages and 12 books that were between between 300 and 500 pages. I did read one nonfiction book this month and the others were all fiction. Here is my genre breakdown. Starting out at the top, we have thrillers followed by romance, mystery, young adult, sci-fi, and horror. Across my 20 reviews this month, I had an average rating of 3.83, which is not too bad at all. I only had one two-star book, three 2.5 stars, one three-star, five 3.5 stars, three four-stars, a 4.5 star, and six five-star books, four of which belong to the same series that I cannot wait to talk about. I hadn't had a five-star book in so long until I read this series. And here's the breakdown of how I read those pages throughout February. I honestly don't know how I did this. For most days, I was reading over 200 pages a day, which is absolutely insane. There's one day I literally read over 750 pages. I don't know what I was on, but I'm definitely back in my reading era, that's for sure. Okay, now let's wrap up the actual books, starting out as I always do with my lowest rated book and working our way up to my highest rated book. So the one two star book that I read in the month of February was Neighborhood Watch by Sarah Rita. This is a suburban mystery thriller about a little neighborhood that is being terrorized by a killer who's determined to take out the worst offenders of just like elitist, consumption, entitlement, like all the things that you think of when you think of the 1%. Yeah, this killer wants to take out the worst of the bunch that live in this bougie little neighborhood, but they're not gonna get past this group of neighborhood moms quickly set their sights on solving the mystery. Why not? They have nothing else better to do. <laughs> so, I unfortunately didn't enjoy this one too much. I predicted exactly who the killer was gonna be. There were also some like weird instances of wording in here that I didn't love, some weird trans representation, just the way that other characters talked about a trans character didn't really sit right with me. I think there were a few editing things that could definitely improve it plot-wise, but overall it was just kind of a forgettable and not up to the caliber of the normal domestic mysteries that I like to read. If you want my full in-depth review, I featured it in a vlog this month. I have it in a new release thriller vlog. I filmed quite a few vlogs in the month of February. I've been loving filming vlogs, so I'm not gonna go too in depth on the ones that I've already vlogged, but I will link all of those videos down below in case you missed them. Moving on to my 2.5 out of five star books. These are the ones that are just right down the road, like middle average vibes. Starting out with Butcher and Blackbird by Bryn Weaver, the book that swept the nation, <laughs> the book that all of TikTok cannot shut up about. I actually just thought it was really, really average. We're following two serial killers who coincidentally kill other serial killers as they're competing with each other to see who can take out the most scum of the earth. 
uh, which seems cute in theory, uh, but it's not as dark as it was pitched to be. It's more like a slightly kooky rom-com with some dark themes, but I wasn't that interested in the relationship. I didn't feel the connection between the characters. It wasn't as dark as it pitched itself to be, and the smut was super cringe. It was a fun story, and I'm definitely not mad about it. I had a fine time while I was reading, other than the cringing at the smut. I just think that this really doesn't match up to the hype that I was hearing about it. Next up, we have another romance, and that is Radiant Sin by Katie Robert. This is the fourth book in the Dark Olympus series, which is an urban romanticy series that follows little couple pairings of Greek gods and goddesses that are getting together in Olympus, which is kind of this like floating city above the United States, which we know. Yeah, this is like imagining Olympus is in the clouds and all the goings on up there in the gossip and scandal and romance that happens between the gods. In this story, we're following Apollo and Cassandra and again with the cringe smut. I don't know, y'all. I don't know. The story was fine. It was fine. It was entertaining for what it was. I listened to it mostly on audio though and I will say the voice actors, um, they just really, they just really went hard uh, on, on the acting and I don't know if it was effective. And another issue that I tend to have more and more uh, the further that I get into the Dark Olympus series is that there is like a very intentional effort to consider representation and consent and things like that, which I obviously really appreciate. But sometimes the scenes end up, because they're so intentionally written, kind of sounding like a PSA. Like I don't want a pause in the middle of a smut scene where where Apollo's like, and I must ask for consent. A condom is essential if you are not on birth control. Like, um, okay, yeah, okay, that's very respectful, but like, what's going on? We're all adults here, we know it. Like, I don't know, I don't know. That part just kind of cringed me out. I definitely didn't feel the connection between these two characters like I have in past editions of this series, but I'm hoping this is just a blip and when I get into the fifth book, it's a little bit better. And my last average read of February was Perfect Little Lives by Amber and Danielle Brown. This is a perfectly fine suburban thriller about two people who realized that their lives were much more intertwined than they originally thought. And one of them might have to do with the other's mother's death. And so she takes it upon herself to rekindle this friendship from childhood and dig out all of the secrets to try to find out what exactly happened to her mother and try to exonerate her father who's currently in prison for the crime. There were a lot of good conversations that were brought up in here, but I do think the pacing was a little bit off. It was a little bit difficult to get into. I didn't care as much about the characters as I did in their first novel. I feel like this is the curse of the second book thing that happens to a lot of thriller authors that I really love, so I'm hopeful for their next release, but this one was not for me. Next up, let's talk about the one three-star book that I read in the month of February, and that was The Overnight Guest by Heather Gudenkoff. And this one was interesting to me. If you like snowy isolated settings in your thrillers, you're going to love this one. We're following a bunch of different perspectives that we're trying to kind of like hodgepodge together and figure out how they all fit. But the main one is we're following a secluded woman in this cabin during a snowstorm and she has an unexpected guest show up outside in the snow. It is this little child and she can't tell what is wrong with him, what's going on, if his parents are nearby, but it seems like his life is in danger. So she takes him in and it starts this chain of events that just goes off the rails. I think this was a really well-written book. However, I think I'm just such a seasoned thriller reader at this point that I was able to see every plot point coming. I guessed the majority of the twists in here and it wasn't even like, oh, I'm gonna put this guess out there. It was like, okay, yeah. I know exactly where this is going, but here's the thing. I did still enjoy it. 
I don't think this is a favorite of all time. I do think it's a little bit of a forgettable thriller, especially since I predicted most of it. But nonetheless, I still had a good time reading it, and I would say the writing style makes it better than average. I had a full idea as to who these characters were, and it was really easy to read. Next up, I had quite a few three and a half star books this month. I feel like that was just the rating of the moment. It was even the rating for my February book club pick for my Pretty Girl Book Club. If you want to join my book club, it is always linked down below. And this month in March, we're reading The Clinic by Kate Quinn. We usually read a thriller or horror pick occasionally, but mostly thrillers. Uh, we did have a horror pick in February. We read Foe by Ian Reed, and I gave this 3.5 out of 5 stars. It was kind of confusing, really thought-provoking, but at the end of the day just kind of went over my head a little bit. I feel like I didn't grasp too much of it until we sat down for the discussion. And thank you to the amazing girls on my Patreon who explained to me the things that I didn't quite grasp. I do think this brings up great conversations and it's wonderfully written like all of Ian Reid's books are, but it just didn't have the same impact for me as We Spread or I'm Thinking of Ending Things, which were both five star books for me. Info, we are following this couple and randomly this guy from some government project shows up at their door and he's like, hey, you, you man, sir, husband, sir, you're gonna have to go to space. And um, don't worry about your wife being all alone. Yeah, she, her, you, lady, you are gonna be just fine because you're gonna have a replacement husband. And there's no choice in the matter. They just have to go along with it. And as they do, wildness ensues. You just really have to be paying close attention <laughs> and really have your brain on while you're reading this book. I think this could work for a lot of people, especially if you like sci-fi thrillers or sci-fi horror, something like Black Mirror-esque. You're gonna love this, but it wasn't quite to that level for me. Next up, I have a, another edition of Spy X Family or Spy Family. I know I've been calling it Spy X Family and everyone's like, you can just call it Spy Family. I think it's cute like spy x family i don't know i just think it's cute okay um and this is by tatsuya endo this is the fourth edition in the series and it's about the family getting a dog uh this is a manga if you don't know anything about spy family but this was my least favorite of the series so far obviously i loved the cute dog content but i kind of feel like it stopped there it didn't really take the story much further it just felt like cute little antics with the dog which i liked but I would like a little bit more development as we continue in this series. So 3.5, not a bad rating, fun time, but not as great as the rest of them. Next up, I have a YA horror called You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight by Kaylin Bayron. This is one that I read for my Black History Month celebrating Black horror and thriller authors vlog. And this one was okay. I had a good little time with it. I just wish it would have been so much longer because I think if we had an extra 50 to 70 pages, this could have been so, so good. But the cutoff was a little weird. We are following this group of teens who work as scare actors at what is kind of supposed to be this fake Friday the 13th horror experience. So they're in this camp and paying people show up to be scared. And our main character plays the final girl and her friends are there with her and her girlfriend is there with her. Really fun sapphic rep in here. But suddenly the staff starts getting actually picked off one by one and a slasher ensues. We are trying to figure out who is doing the slashing and help our final girl get out alive. It has a little bit of a speculative twist in here, which I really enjoyed, but I feel like it wasn't quite fleshed out enough. So while I had fun, it just had to sit at a 3.5. It didn't quite make it to a four. Next up, we have Murder in the Family by Kara Hunter. This is a mystery thriller that reads like a Netflix true crime documentary. If you like something like The Staircase or Making a Murderer, you will love this book. It literally reads exactly like that. This book is almost exclusively media transcripts or like text messages, emails, 
posters like it is fully media and it goes really fast so even though it looks kind of thick it's a quick read and we are rehashing this murder that took place in this family the patriarch of the family was just found dead outside and everyone in the family is a suspect so we have a bunch of experts on the case going over the evidence again presenting it to us and the whole book is kind of a game it says there's one body and six experts can you solve the case before they do and um i definitely did not <laughs> it was so wild it took so many turns and i thought it was so fun i just didn't feel super connected i feel like if you are a character driven girly with which I definitely am, you're not gonna feel totally invested in this story. I needed a little bit more connection and the clinical lens of all the researchers just kind of took away from that. Also at times the pacing was weird. There were some episodes, quote unquote, that kind of lagged where they were really info heavy and less exciting. But overall, I had a good time with it. If you like media and true crime, you're gonna like this. And my last 3.5 out of five star book that I read in February was Secluded Cabin Sleeps Six by Lisa Unger. This is another secluded cabin book. I don't know why I was really liking those books in February. Even though it's like 80 degrees here in Texas, I was still trying to hold on to some wintry vibes. Even though y'all in the comments of the vlog, everyone was like, it takes place in June. It takes place in June. Then why is it described as cold and there are descriptions of snowy mountains and they're literally in an isolated cabin during a storm? Like, I understand that it takes place in June, but no matter the time that it takes place, the month they're saying on the page, it felt wintry. So let me tell you, it's wintry. <laughs> And that is my personal opinion. You cannot take it away from me. This is a winter coated book. It's not a snowstorm. It is a rainstorm. But basically we're following six people who are trapped in this cabin together, getting picked off one by one. During a rainstorm, we're trying to figure out who it is, what their motivation is for killing, and along the way unraveling all the secrets and interconnected relationships in the family. I think the generational trauma rep is really good in here. I liked the conversations that it opened up there. I think I said in the vlog, like you can tell that Lisa Unger has been to therapy because she was, she was really using terms, you know what I mean? But as for the overall story, I just think it lagged a little bit. The pacing was weird. It was a little predictable. Overall, it was a pretty good thriller, but nothing I'm gonna actively over the top recommend to y'all. Next up, let's get into my four star books. And these are where I'm gonna start actively recommending. You have to go read these. You have to go buy these. They're so, so good. Starting out with No One Needs to Know by Lindsay Cameron. Oh my God. I'm actually thinking of raising my rating to a 4.5 because I cannot stop thinking about this book. It was so fast paced and drama filled. It was just intriguing from the first page. I was addicted to reading this thriller and it's so unique. We are following these elite Upper East Siders. They deal with a new app that's on the scene and it's kind of like yik yak but it's called urban myth so basically everyone in the neighborhood because it's zoned by zip code those are the people you use the app with everyone in this neighborhood can post anonymous confessions drop people's secrets but suddenly a data breach happens someone leaks who said each and every confession so people were telling on themselves about their affairs and their nefarious activities, their addiction to thievery, other scandalous things. Some people were telling on their friends and neighbors and some people were just straight up lying. And at the end of it all, there is someone who is dead. So we are trying to figure out who did it, what was the motive, and how do all these secrets interconnect. It was so, so, so good. The character relationships are really intricate and really well done. The women in this book didn't just feel like the dumb wife that's getting cheated on in every domestic thriller. Like, no, they were full fleshed out female characters, which I really appreciate. The story was exciting and unpredictable. The social media elements were interesting. At the end of every chapter, you can just like see little confessions and the like comments that are on them. I think it's so funny. If you like domestic drama, rich people drama, murder mysteries that take place in a cool setting like the Upper East Side, read this. 
my pitch for it is it's like watching Gossip Girl, but if we only followed the drama of the adults. Next up, we have All the Little Raindrops by Mia Sheridan. This is a dark romance about two people who are kidnapped and they are not only held and tortured, but they are broadcasted to the dark web. People are paying for this and when they escape years and years and years later, they feel like it might still be happening and they never brought their kidnappers and torturers to justice. So they set out to tear down this entire ring on the dark web. And also along the way, they have this like hallmarky kind of romance and the smut in here is actually really good. Everything in here is just solid. It's a solid mystery thriller plot. There's solid horror and gore. There's a solid romance. There's solid feel good emotional moments, but there are also solid tense and fast paced moments. This book just really has everything and it does it all really well. It's not a new favorite, but it's definitely one that I would widely recommend if you like a mix of thriller and romance. And my last four star book I want to recommend to y'all is The Flight of Icarus by Caitlin Schneiderhahn. And this is a Stranger Things book. Okay, if you like Stranger Things at all and you just cannot wait for season five, which I literally think about it every day, it's like one of the first things that I think of when I wake up in the morning is like, I cannot wait for Stranger Things season five. If that's you, you have to read this because I'm an Eddie girl, okay? I have an Eddie tattoo on my little arm and this gives you all of Eddie's backstory that leads up to right before season four begins. So, there's just so much lore in here. The character is written so well. It just feels like one of my favorite fictional characters that has ever existed has expanded lore and he's so cute and he's so fun and he has this like depth of emotion that we can feel watching the show but it's not expressly stated obviously because he's a side character. It's so adorable. It's so fun. It was literally just perfect, okay? Like I love Eddie so much. Um please don't talk to me. I am in mourning. And I did have one 4.5 star book that I read in the month of February, and that was Jackal by Erin E. Adams. I have the book, but I do not have it in my possession because it's already one that I've started passing around to all my friends for everyone to read because it was so good. We are following a black woman who returns to her predominantly white hometown for her friend's wedding, and she starts to notice this trend of little black girls going missing every single summer. Unfortunately, when she goes back to town, her friend's daughter is the young black girl that goes missing. So she starts to unravel this pattern and what might be driving it. This book was so good. Amazing connection to our main character, beautiful conversations with so much meaning were opened up. The plot was unpredictable and had beautiful pacing. And you're probably hearing these things and asking, why did you give it the 4.5? Why did you dock that little half star? Because it sounds like a five star book. And I guarantee you it would have been if there was just one element that didn't catch me off guard. Everything was so, so, so rooted in reality. And then there was just this one part that immediately took me out of the story. And I cannot call it a favorite of all time because of that. I really wanted to just like brush over it, honestly, when I was filming my vlog and be like, anyway, five stars, I love it, I love it, I love it. Because I do genuinely think it's such a good book, but I had to be real. And I knew when I read that part of the story, my heart sank because I was out of the world of the book. So I would say, be aware going in, there is some part that is not rooted in reality. Please go in open to that. I really wish that I would have. It really catches you off guard and doesn't fit the rest of the story, but everything else is flawless. If you are prepared for that, you're going to love this book. And finally, we are on to my five star reads of February, which are actually mostly romance. I haven't read a five star thriller yet this year, which is kind of wild, but I'm waiting for a five star horror thriller. In the meantime, the romance is popping off, okay? We have Twice Shy by Sarah Hogel. Everyone told me for so long, read Sarah Hogel, you're gonna love Sarah Hogel, Sarah Hogel will get you out of your reading slump. I did not believe y'all because these just look like 
any old throwaway rom-com you would find on the shelves of Target. However, this is so much more. I absolutely loved this book. It is so charming and funny. It's a rom-com that's actually funny. Can we believe that? It's not just like puns and banter, like whatever banter is. I don't know. People love to talk about banter. I think banter is kind of cringe. Like that banter doesn't really happen in real life, at least not that like that with my friends. Um, I don't know. Our banter is like bullying each other and making weird random sounds. So I don't really get the whole like, I'm gonna make a pun and that's banter. No, no, no. That shit in rom-coms annoys the shit out of me. So I love that Twice Shy like felt real. The banter felt very real and it was actually funny. And I don't know if I just resonated with that because it reminded me more of my friends because these two main characters are both like shy, awkward, introverted, low-key neurodivergent, <laughs> adorable human beings. But um, yeah, the representation for that type of a person, if that is you, if that is your friend group, you're gonna love this. Our male love interest is just this like sweetheart. Like he looks like this like rugged guy, but he's such a sweetheart. He's so like nervous and shy and awkward. And then our main girl is so cute. She kind of looks like on the outside, she has it all together. Like she knows how to put together a cute outfit and she's not afraid to be like bold and fun and funny. But on the inside, she is like, nobody can see. Everyone's gonna see through this veneer and know that I don't have anything figured out and nobody can know. So she has this deep level of insecurity and anxiety as well. And they kind of connect over that and form this romance as they clear out her aunt's house who passed away and left her estate to both of them. So it's like a forced proximity thing where they're both inheriting this house and figuring out what to do with it together. They start off as a very unlikely pairing, getting off on the wrong foot, but even then he's doing sweet things for her. And of course they fall in love along the way. I thought the third act miscommunication was actually really well done. It felt really relevant for the issues that were showing up for them individually and as a couple. And I feel like it deepened the connection. I cried at the end of this book, which almost never happens to me with a rom-com. I was just so surprised by this. It was adorable, had depth of emotion and just a feel good time. The next four books that I want to talk to you about are all in the same series. And that is The Wit Sex Series by Ashley N. Rostek. Okay, the first book is Find Me. Then we have Save Me, Love Me, and Free Me. And I give them all five stars. This is a dark romance series following our main character Shiloh. And Shiloh has been through a lot. Her entire family was taken out by a serial killer who was still on the loose. And now it's a year later and she's in witness protection, just trying to stay safe from him as the FBI tries to catch this mofo. And he is now going around a year later, murdering women that look like her, taping a picture of her face to their face and just like leaving them dead with a million stab wounds. And she's like, <laughs> okay, like I'm trying to heal and like grieve my entire family, but this literal psycho is actually after me and killing everyone who looks like me. And I feel like it's my fault. So now I'm blaming myself and I'm like deep in my trauma. That is what's going on for Shiloh, okay? And she moves to this new town to try to be like anonymous with her new identity. And next door just so happens to be four super hot, super sweet, super funny, super caring, super adorable brothers. And it's a reverse harem. Not only is it like phenomenal smut, but it's also this deep level of like emotional bonding and trauma healing that happens over the course of the four books. It's slow burn actually. Like you would expect the description of a reverse harem romance, like boom, we're out the gate with the foursome in the first book. No, 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 no. There is like nothing more than a little kiss in the first book. It's slow burn. The mystery thriller plot honestly could stand completely on its own without the romance. And I'm obsessed with the series. It is like my new Roman Empire. I think about it all the time. I love it. And I have a full in-depth reading vlog of the entire series up on my Patreon. So you can go check that out if you are a member of my top tier over there or you can join. 
same link as my book club down below. So those are all the books that I rated this month, all 20 books, but I actually forgot that I don't rate my nonfiction books, so it wasn't included in the reviews and like all the books that I had lined up to talk about over here. So my one nonfiction book that I read in February was actually a memoir, and that was Paris, obviously by Paris Hilton. This was such an amazing memoir. It was so interesting to hear this in-depth account of Paris Hilton's life. We think that we know her, but really we just know the character that she portrays and she really plays up this like dumb blonde thing, but she is such a brilliant writer. She's such an intelligent mind. She's had so many harrowing things happen to her that she talks about with such grace and such inspiration. Like I want to know everything about her. I would love to sit down and talk with her because she just sounds like one of the most interesting people. It's so interesting to me when people are so wildly different in reality from how the world kind of sees them or portrays them. If you've been around here for a while, you probably know my fear of like perception and being perceived. And that's the main thing that like Paris has dealt with her entire life. And we really go into her upbringing in this book, which I had no idea this stuff happened to her. And now she is making moves towards changing the entire system from the ground up that abused her. It is incredible. It is real. It happened to so many kids and it is just so amazing that she is not only able to speak about what happened to her with such healing and grace, but also to do these real life implication things. I just think she's phenomenal. This was an amazing read. It was an emotional read, but she's also just like so funny and so good at balancing out. I want to read more. I could read just more stories from her life forever and ever and ever. I could not believe as I was reading it that this was not only a real person, but Paris Hilton. We just don't really know her y'all. And if you want to get to know her, you should really read her memoir. And with that, those are all of the 21 books that I read throughout the course of February, 2024. I hope you got a couple of good recommendations from this video. Let me know down below what was your favorite book that you read in February. Don't forget to download the Timu app and use my code down below to get that coupon bundle and shop till you drop. Thank you guys so so much for watching this video. Go ahead and give it a like if you liked it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Also subscribe to my podcast channel if you haven't subscribed there. There are new episodes every single Thursday or Friday. Don't forget to go to therapy and read a book this week and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!